Well, welcome everybody to Mining for More. I'm Becca Mowry and I'm here with Dina Merchant and we're continuing on through the book of Mark and we are in chapter nine. This is a power pack chapter, lots of verses. I think we have 50 verses to cover in two different parts and today we'll be uh, covering verses one through 29. So we have so much stuff. So just so I'm just going to put this out there. We are just going to skim yes. the surface on this chapter because it is there's so much in it. So we need to jump in and dig in so we can get this in in around 20 minutes. Uh, but Dina, I'll hand it off to you. You want to pray for us real quick? And then uh, we're going to read through the first part of this chapter. I would love to. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's true. And we ask that you would speak to us right now. Help us to hear what you want us to hear. And we invite you into our time right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Dina. Okay. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And we're starting at verse 1. Jesus went on to say, I tell you the truth. Some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God arrive in great power. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed and his clothes became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Rabbi, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't really know what to say, for they were all terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus with them. As they went back down the mountain, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept it to themselves, but they often asked each other what he meant by rising from the dead. Then they asked him, why do the teachers of religious law insist that Elijah must return before the Messiah comes? Jesus responded, Elijah is indeed coming first to get everything ready. Yet why do the scriptures say that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be treated with utter contempt? But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they chose to abuse him just as the scriptures predicted. Nice and clear, like many of the words of Jesus. Oh Very goodness, clear. So much in there. Very Oh my goodness. All right, well, let's continue reading on, and then we'll jump back into there. So picking up in verse 14. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought my son. I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of his speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him into the ground. Mm -hmm. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsions. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. Mm. The deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can only come out by prayer. So there's so much in here, so many incredible words from Jesus, so many... Um, words that, uh, if we're really honest, cause us um, to question, like, what in the world, Lord, 
do you mean? What can I learn about you? What are you trying to teach me about my character? So Dina, what were some of the things uh, going all the way back to the transfiguration that jumped out to you at, at first? Well, I just, first, I just love that Jesus takes the three of them, right? And I, it must have been hard for the other disciples, right? But Jesus takes the three and, and he goes up to the mountain. And I kept thinking like this mountaintop experience, which sometimes in our own lives, we have these mountaintop experiences, right? And we are to learn from that, but we can't stay up on the mountain. Mm -mm. And sometimes like it's easy to have that mountaintop experience and we want to stay there, but they had to go back into the valley. Yeah. And we'll get to that in a second, but when they went down there, it was chaotic. Yeah. And we have to remind ourselves sometimes when we feel like we've had this like, oh, amazing time with the Lord, that we're going to have to walk into the rest of reality. Like mm -hmm. we can't stay there, mm -hmm. but we have to remember what we learned there and then walk into our everyday uh, the, the everyday grind. Right? I, love that. I think that that is even just a word for me. And I'm sure many people, whoever's listening, it could be for them too. It's like, we have these moments of, you know, whether we're in worship or whether we're just having like a, like a wonderful time in our quiet time or whatever that looks like, you know, great godly company and community. And then, like you said, to walk back down, but notice they didn't walk back down without Jesus. They did. They walked with him. Yeah. He went with them into the, mm. I, I'll say mundane. I mean, that sounds harsh, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. the everyday stuff of life. Yeah. Right. And then I love the fact that this cloud comes. Mm. And what I thought about was in the old Testament, God often appeared in a cloud. Mm -hmm. And like when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, the cloud went before them Yes, during the day. And then there was a pillow of fire at night so they could see. But I thought, and then Moses always went and God would appear to him in the form of a cloud. So here's yes. this like cloud coming, right? And then what it says is, listen to him. So Peter mm -hmm. was so like, I love Peter because listen, any of us could be <laughs> Peter. Let's just be honest, I right? Know. I mean, he just yeah. couldn't be still in the presence of this greatness, right? He just couldn't be like, wow, what can I learn from this? He just had to yeah. like, had to, he had to say something because yes. he was nervous, right? Yes. Which is often what happens to us, right? Yes. We get so like, what's words, going on? I, you know, I had wrote, I had wrote like, there's this amazing experience. You know, first Jesus is like, I'm going to call you up the mountainside, you know, like journey with me, yeah. follow me. I have a place to take you. So they go up there and then they're experiencing this crazy like experience, right? Like they're seeing, they have the journey up the mountain with Jesus gave them a revelation of who Jesus really was. Right. And, and that's really what we're called to do, to journey with Jesus up that mountainside with Jesus. And, and in our journeying and pursuit of Jesus, we're going to have a revelation of who he is. Now that doesn't mean they had it all figured out. You'll notice like they're questioning and all oh, sorts yeah. of crazy stuff is always going on, which is very encouraging to me, but um, you know, so they go up this mountain, they, they see Jesus, he's transfigured. They have this revelation of him. And then what do they want to do? Like you said, yeah. Oh, what can we do? Jesus? What yeah. can we do? What can we do? Can we set up tents? Can we do this? Can we do? And like, that's, I see myself so much in that scripture. It's like, Jesus is doing something incredible. And then I kind of want to like, just take over and be busy. And yeah. it's a good spirit to be helpful. But the Lord like comes in this moment and he doesn't say, yes, why don't you build some tents? And why don't you do this now? Get to work. No, no, no. The, fa the father like affirms who Jesus is. Yep. He is my son. He's not just the Messiah. See, the Jews didn't necessarily link the Messiah as being the son of God. Right. And here the Lord is linking them. Not only is this the Messiah, as we learned, like Peter said, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah. Right. He's saying he is the son of God. Right. He is actually my son. So now he's linking the Messiah and the son of God. Now listen to him. And two, two and one. And I love the two that, so here's Moses and Elijah, right? Now these are Old Testament prophets, but these are the the patriarchs that the disciples mm -hmm. would have looked up to and they they were like key to that their faith yeah. and it i don't think it's any mistake that that those were the people that jesus was on the mountaintop with right mm -hmm. some say that moses was actually able to see the promised land he was able to be in the presence of the land that he wasn't able to get into right mm -hmm. and, and so that's a beautiful thought of like god yes. allowed him to come and be there 
Yes. And they could see Jesus. They could yes. see, see the Messiah, to right? see the whole fulfillment of everything that he started right. from the sacrificial system so that the people could be in the presence of God so yeah. that they could worship him. Remember? Like right. Moses always said, well, why do I have to do this? Do this so that my people can worship me. And now right. they're seeing it fulfilled. Yes. And that's but cool. I feel yeah. like it was a little bit of like, this is the old and this is the new. Mm -hmm. And God saying, so Peter was like, this is great. We can blend everything together. It's yeah. perfect. We're just going to yes. have one big happy, like shelters up here. And God says, no, this is my son. You listen to him. Mm -hmm. Like Moses and Elijah were, they were very important and they were part mm -hmm. of my plan, but they weren't my son. They're not the Messiah. They're not the savior. Mm -hmm. You can't cling to the old. Yes. You have to embrace the new. Yes. Yep. And I felt like this is God saying, you know, we can't go backwards. I think we talked about this before. Stop yes. going back. We need yes. to focus on what, what I want today. Now, yep. who am I in your life to you? And listen to me. Because our world is very loud and noisy. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to listen to a lot of other things and be distracted. And we need to consciously choose to just listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just, just listen to you. Absolutely. I love too. I that was that's a really powerful point too that you made that distinction of, you know, like what the law and the prophets. So you have Moses representing the law and Elijah the prophets. So he's saying, and this is that is the scripture. Whenever you're taught, whenever we're reading in the old yeah. testament, the Pharisees talk about scripture and stuff. Remember, they don't have the New Testament. That didn't come for like a hundred years later. So um they have the law and they have the prophets. Right. And so, like you were saying, he, they represent that up there with Jesus. And now Jesus has said, I have come to fulfill these. And that's where so often the um, disciples are getting it wrong. The people are getting it wrong. And particularly the religious people are getting it wrong because they're constantly interpreting everything through the law, yeah. through the Jewish law, through the Jewish law, through the Jewish interpretation and through the rabbi's yoke, through the rabbi's way of interpreting things. And, and I love that you made that partnership where it's like, all right, there is a trinity here between the spirit of Jesus, the law and the prophets. Like there's this kind of, there's this unity and this partnership between them. But listen to Jesus. Like this is the new way for it. I love, yeah. that's a really yeah. powerful um, well, correlation. It's beautiful, like, like Moses was all about the law, right? Elijah was prophet and like you said it's just that's what they would have clung to that's yeah. what they knew right and that's but, all they knew and that's all they knew yeah so i just think it's beautiful and then for us today to think it's not for us it's not so much about the old testament right sometimes we we're so focused on because we have the new testament so you know jesus jesus yes. is kind of our focus but it's still easy to get distracted and not listen to him yes and it's still easy to interpret the old testament incorrectly if we're mm -hmm. not interpreting it and filtering it through the character and the revelation of who Jesus is. Yes. And that's why I love that Jesus in his full form, I said he was transfigured before them. Like they had a revelation of who he was. It was spoken over them that he's the son of God. And it's, it's, that's why, you know, people who um, read the old Testament without the revelation of Jesus, they will miss it. They will miss it. That's why people can justify horrific things, you know, like the wars and all this kind of stuff, like um, different kind of behavior, exclusion, all sorts of things. They can justify it in the Old Testament because they're not interpreting it through the character and the ministry and the revelation of Jesus Christ. You know, so that's that very lens, important. Right. Yeah, it's so important. So I, yeah. just, I just love that. And I just feel like that's the word, like, listen to yep. him. Yep. I mean, yep. We tune our ears to what he's saying, right? Yes. And then they literally yep. leave and they go down this mountain. Right? Yeah. And there's chaos. Like it's like they have this really nice <laughs> moment. Before they get down, yep. I love this too because this just reminds me that the disciples really just had no idea what was happening. Yep. They just had yep. no idea really what Jesus was going to do. Yeah. Like hindsight is twenty twenty. Like you and I could be like, he mm -hmm. said it. He said it. Like he told him he was going to die. What, what did you not understand by that? But they're literally going, what is he talking about? What does he mean by that? But they didn't yeah. want to say anything, right? Because they were like, yes. and it just, it just very um, comforting to me to know that they didn't get it. <laughs> and yet they were walking with Jesus. And mm -hmm. there's many things that I don't get until later. 
until after I look back and I say, oh, I, okay, now I'm, maybe I understand. Yeah, like Jesus can literally say it to us and we're still like, well, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, I will die and I will rise again in three days. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't understand that. You need to pray for those who persecute you. But Lord, what does that really mean? Right. He's yeah. like, you know what it really means? It means pray for those who persecute you. That's right. It's like, you must forgive that person who hurt you. Yeah. What? Now, Lord, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? You mean like, he's oh, like, like I forgive. forgive, but then I don't like, yeah. I push them away. No, yeah. he's just like, you forgive. And then you really forget, like you move yeah. forward into yeah. the future. Yeah. But it's like hindsight sometimes until later you go, I see why Jesus said that. I see yeah. what you're trying to get at. And sometimes it doesn't happen until much later. Mm-hmm. but the disciples they didn't get it so anyway mm-hmm. i just love that because like here they are again not like you can just see their confused faces going what's he talking about yeah i don't want to ask him. what does he mean yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i don't want to ask i don't want to ask you you, ask. Say, yeah. you say i'm always saying the wrong yeah. thing you yeah. ask him and then they get down there and there's this chaotic moment of this father yeah. like, in the desperation with his son and trying to like yeah please help it and the line that really i mean you know it's bolded in my my copy of the of the of the bible here because it's like one of those like big words of scripture but when the father says i do believe but yeah help me come my overcome my unbelief. yes and some I, actually say help me overcome my doubt and i yes. like that better because if you use the word unbelief it makes it seem like i believe but i don't believe i yes believe yeah i like the fact that it says Help me overcome my doubt. My doubt. Like, like, Lord, I believe. And I love how he like desperately cried out. Yeah. I had written down like, there is so much that I believe, Lord. There's so much that I believe about your character. But like, th- I know, I know I still doubt things. Yes. I know and- I still doubt things. Yeah. I know you're a healer. But then when it comes to praying for somebody, when they ask for healing, I'm like, <sighs> right like but what if you don't I doubt I doubt what will happen I doubt what it means for me I doubt what it means for the person I doubt for their faith I doubt you know it's like I see myself all over this passage and I just love how he was so desperate he's like help me overcome it okay I love the fact that because just because he had doubts didn't mean he didn't believe yeah I think sometimes we feel like oh my gosh I'm not a believer I, I don't trust God. And yes. I wrote down that when w- doubt just needs more information. Mm. Doubt just needs a revelation. Yeah. I feel like I'm in a rap song right now. Doubt <laughs> just, <laughs> Spoken word doubt, to it, Dina. Doubt just needs us to like, when we obey, the doubt yeah. goes away. Like mm. when we can like walk into yes. the obedience of what God is asking us to do, yep. we learn more about him and there's less doubt. Yes. Than there was yes. And our faith actually grows. I think some people say, well, I can't pray for someone because I don't have all the answers yet. But once I have more answers, then I'll do it. And I'm like, no, no, no. Pray for people and let the Lord build your faith. Yes. yes. Your and faith that's what I will hear. rise yeah. up within you when, you when you do that. Yeah. And I also love, I wrote down. You know, I noticed that like Jesus didn't say, well, you know what? If you only had more faith, I would have done it. But you really blew it. Right, right. You or really come back tomorrow when your yeah. faith is stronger. Yeah. Come yeah. back. He yeah. doesn't. He no. heals the boy. Yeah. He yeah. heals him. And I can't remember if I said this in the last time. I remember saying to Brian, um, you know, I know I've shared with you. It's been like such a weird season, this whole COVID thing. And then like all the political stuff. And oh, yeah. Like, just like the division and the disunity that's going on in our nation. And we even see it in our church. And, and, you know, I said to Brian at one point, I was like, how did Paul keep going on? Now, if you read anything about Paul, he had like a tremendously difficult life yes. as a disciple. Of yes. Jesus. And I was like, how, how did he keep going on? And Brian took a long pause and he said afterwards, he's like, because he saw the power yeah. of the spirit at work. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, it's like when we see the spirit, operate in power like touch people's lives restore marriages heal people these are things that we see regularly at our church like when the lord moves in power yeah it is so exciting and it will help you overcome your doubt it will spur you on in faith so like go after it go after those things right but it's our choice 
to yes. what we focus on. Yeah. So the thing is, yeah. we could either look at the power yeah. of God and what he's doing yeah. and let that be our focus, or yeah. we can be so yeah. distracted yeah. by yeah. the things that I believe that the enemy tries to throw at us, right? That are on the outskirts that we like, it's kind of like when, when Peter got mm-hmm. out of the boat, right? His eyes were on Jesus and everything was okay until he started looking at the wind and the waves. And for us, the wind and the waves are those things, right? COVID, whatever it is that we're doing, we're dealing with disunity and the, just the, the political stuff around us, we can be like, oh, oh, and then we lose our focus. And we, yes. have, we have to stay focused on the kingdom of God. Yeah. And I wrote down like the man, he was honest. He knew what he, he needed. Yeah. He wasn't just like, Jesus, I do believe. Why do you think I came to you? No, he was like, okay, I recognize that there's unbelief in me. Like yeah. I believe, but I recognize there's doubt. Yeah. Like help me overcome it. And what a beautiful cry for us to always say, help me overcome yeah. it. And then just to close out this chapter in these next couple of minutes, I, you know, it, 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 it ends very strange. Yeah. Uh, it's not the end of the chapter, but the section where, you know, the disciples were not able to help this boy. Right. Now they have done amazing things and they we have. will continue to see if you read in the book of Acts yeah. and after the Holy Spirit comes, yeah. I mean, incredible things have happened and they have cast out demons before. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but Jesus says they, because they couldn't do it, he says, this kind can only come out by prayer. And, and I wrote down, there is a direct correlation between prayer and power. Yes. When we pray, when we press into the Lord, when we commit Mm -hmm. ourselves and that this is a discipline that I feel like the Lord is like trying to teach me more and more, like to lean into prayer, to lean into these things of the Lord. There is a direct correlation that when we spend time with the father, mountains are moved and the spirit descends. It's like that Psalm 18, where it talks about like how I ascend to the highest places with the Lord and he equips me. Yes. He equips me with what I need to do so that I can descend into yeah. the battle. Which is the power. picture of what happened here with the mount exactly. on the mountain. And I wrote down very similar, but I wrote down too, like sometimes we get so comfortable, like operating in our own strength. Like mm-hmm. we might've started out being someone who's like, I can't do this unless I pray. I can't do this unless I really seek God first. But mm-hmm. then as we kind of grow in our relationship with God, sometimes we feel like I did this before. Yeah. I can do this again. Yeah. I, it's fine. I don't, well, yeah. I need to just do it. And I think that's what was happening with the disciples. Mm-hmm. They were like, we just came back from this great ministry tour. I mean, come on, we've got this. Yes. And they didn't pray. They didn't seek mm-hmm. God's help. They were and it happens. It, things happen differently. Every time we saw, we've seen that with healing too. Right. Sometimes Jesus just speaks. Sometimes he's there. Sometimes he's not. Sometimes he spits. Yeah. Sometimes he touches. Right. All right. of these things that we've learned. Like you need discernment and that discernment of where, how the spirit is at moving, what the spirit is doing that comes by spending time with the father, right? By spending time. So maybe that's a great place to end there. Maybe we can uh, pray into that um, and just ask the Lord for that, like deep desire to spend time with him. um, But uh, real discernment to move out in the things of the spirit. Yeah. Why don't I pray for us as we close out this time? Lord, we just thank you Mm -hmm. for your word. And I thank you um, how encouraging and inspiring and convicting and correcting Mm -hmm. and um, motivating it is, Lord. I thank you uh, that we can read scripture through the filter of your character and um, what you've done. And we just ask that you continue to help it come alive, Lord, and give us a deep desire to spend time with you. And as we do, Lord, would you fill us with the power of your spirit that we might move out with such acute discernment for what it is that you want to do in and through each one of us. Mm. So we just thank you for this and ask all of this in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for (laughs) joining everyone. Make sure the rest of this chapter is power packed. We're super excited. So join us for part two uh, of Mark chapter nine. Have a great day.